approximately one half million preteen and teenage alcoholics in this country today. And the number is growing. Three out of every four teenagers do some drinking. One out of 20 has a serious drinking problem. One in 10 will become an alcoholic. You can go where you want to go. Do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. Corey's will be there. Alcohol-related arrests of young people have increased 700% in the past four years. It may take an adult 15 years to become an alcoholic. It takes a teenager 15 months. So go where you want to go. Be what you want to be. Happiness is Corey's beer. You find them in schools, on the beach, in your own home. This is Sarah Travis. She's 15 years old. She's an alcoholic. How are you doing, Sarah? Not so good. How are you? Oh, okay. Oh, I'm so wonderful to be with you. Yeah, Wouldn't you say so? I feel like you're new, too. I'll get you making tons of new friends. Just a couple of fresh ones, will you, honey? Hi, honey. How are you doing in school, huh? Sure, you know Joanne. She looks like you. How does it feel to be a grandmother? Fine, since Liz Taylor made it fashionable. Yeah, but Liz Taylor didn't let herself become a baby sister, right? Right. Well, that was her loss. Nancy can leave him without any time she wants to. Oh, and your smile. See, not her. That's me. Wayne. Mom, Mom, I'm thinking it's changing. Can I change him? Do you want to, honey? He's my nephew, isn't he? I'll bet you're as glad to be out of there as I am, huh? Do they ask you the same dumb questions they ask me? How do you like your new school? Nice girl like you must be dating lots of boys. I mean, how would they like it if I assumed they were having any good love affairs lately? Well, I promise you, when you grow up, I'll never ask you how you like your new school. Okay. Yeah. Matt wants to introduce you to Mr. Peterson. See what I mean? Oh, honey, come on. Please, try to make a good impression. You know how important this is to Matt. Sarah. Sarah, honey, I don't think you've met Mr. Peterson, have you? Yeah, his son goes to the same high school as you. Ray, Ray Peterson, have you met him? I don't think so. Well, you will, but you got to watch out for him. Uh, I know he's my son, but I still feel it's my duty to warn you. He uh, comes on a little strong with the girls. But he's a nice kid. I don't want you to think anything else. He, you know, he doesn't smoke dope, doesn't eat pills. I'll get this. Oh, Matt. Mm -hmm. You finished with that? Well, how about Sarah? No, what? Shall I give Ray your phone number? Well, actually, Mr. Peterson... I don't really like blind dates. I'm sure Ray doesn't either. Mm, okay. Can I at least buy you a drink? You can have a drink because I made Matt a vice president. She can have a drink to help celebrate Matt becoming vice president, can't she? Sure, she can have anything she wants. As long as it's ginger ale. Well, mother knows best, so ginger ale is gonna be. Here we go, a little lap right there, and a little something to help the medicine go down. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, come on, where are you going? I want to ask you about that. I want to ask you about that. You must hate nights like this. Like what? Mm, it was parties, you know, serving all these people. Well, it's not so bad. Come on. Okay. It's not my favorite way to spend an evening. But like the man says, that's what I'm paid for. Okay. Go out and earn some money. Mm -hmm. Thanks, babe. Okay.
breakfast? Oh, man. That must have been some terrific party. You know, I think we went through two cases of scotch. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess. Mm. Sarah, isn't this the day you try out for the Glee Club? Mm hmm. Did you pick out what you're going to sing? Not yet. <laughs> Did you see your boss? <laughs> Did you see old Million Dollar Peterson trying to make it up to his silver gray limousine? What about you all, Mrs. What's her name? What about her? That lady holds her liquor like a broken glass. Hmm. Too bad she doesn't have your hollow leg. Complaining? No, impressed. I've never seen a man drink so much and still be able to do 40 push ups before bed. <laughs> You'll be fine, love. You'll like it here. You just wait and see. I sure hope so. Now, go on to school, baby. Okay. Bye. Bye. Club meets Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon. Okay? All right. Let's see. Sarah Travis is next. Uh, Sarah Travis, is she here? Yeah. Well, if you're not ready, Sarah, we can come back to you. No, I'm ready. Would you hold these? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Here you go. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Start again, please. Thank you for trying out, Sarah. Um, Harriet Bernstein is next. If I could just try once more. Oh, you do that, but you come back and see us next semester, okay? Harriet Bernstein? Travis's room, please. But he's got to be there. Can you in the lobby? There. Can you in the lobby? But he's got to be around.
got a delivery for uh, Mrs. Hodges. Oh, I'll take it. What is it? I'm oh, sorry, pal. I can't leave it with you. It's booze. Oh. Is your mom home? Yeah, come on in. She's in the shower. She said, leave it on the dining room table and the money's in there. Okay, that's uh, A73 with the tux. Portrait of a Teenage Alcoholic will continue in a moment on the USA Movie. Well, if he's not in his room, can you try the restaurant, please? I know it's a long-distance call, but you can take it out of my allowance. Oh, honey, you know that's not necessary. You can call your father anytime you want. But you can't expect him to come all the way back from San Francisco just He'll because come. you... Even if he does, then what? Well, maybe he can arrange it so I can go back to my old school. <laughs> Why would you want to go back to the old school anyway? You weren't so happy there. Could you try the lobby then, please? It's important. You were always complaining. Have you forgotten so soon? Honey, listen. Maybe if you tried to talk to Matt. I don't want to talk to Matt. I want to talk to my father. Why do you treat Matt as if he doesn't exist? He tries to be nice to you. He's trying to make a life for us. Daddy? It's me, Sarah. Wait, hold on a minute. Please. Daddy? How are you? Hello, I'm home. Hi, hon. Uh, now, what kind of a place is that to greet a vice president? Anything wrong? No, not really. I'm Matt. Oh, have you two been sniping at each other again? Sarah, honey, I just hate to see you set yourself up for a disappointment, that's all. I know, Mom, but you're wrong. He's coming day after tomorrow just to see me, just like I knew he would. My daddy's coming. I guess things aren't as bad as I thought they'd be. Yeah, so the way you sounded on a telephone, I thought I was going to find a little puddle of salty tears. Well, are you mad at me, Dad? I mean, you know, for dragging me all the way down here for nothing. Did you ever get the idea you're nothing? Well, you're one of the most important things in the world. I mean, you and your sister and, of course, my grandson. Aren't you supposed to be in classes today? You're not cutting, are you? What are you doing away from work? You do still have a job, don't you? Right? Is this Dad, work? you do still have a job, don't you? Well, not exactly. No, no, not exactly. Aw, Dad. Come on, grab me a beer before you start sounding like your mother. I don't see. There you go. I'll use this. Come that, will you? So, there I was, walking across the San Gabriel River Bridge. 
And I stopped right in the middle of it, and I said, Richard, what the hell are you doing with your life? You're dragging your aspirations up and down the state. You're selling art supplies to other people for them to use. See, that's what gets me, sweetheart. I got a lot of talent. I mean, a lot more than those kids coming out of art school. I mean, was it my fault? I, I had responsibilities, you know? I had to get a straight job. I'm, I don't want you to blame your mother. No, I'm not doing that. So there I was, standing in the middle of the bridge, and I said to myself, Richard, what, what would happen? What would be the earth-shaking consequences if you took this sample case and just threw it as far as you could? <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons I don't work there anymore. But what are you going to do now? Mm. Well, I'll tell you what I'd like to do. Go to Oregon? Mm. <laughs> Perfect time for it. Oh, for both of us. I love it. Get a little place out in the backwoods somewhere. Lay in some canvas and some decent oils and maybe get a horse oh, from you or something. Daddy, you could just paint all day. You wouldn't have to worry about delivery dates or sales quotas. Yeah, that's pretty good, huh? Oh, Daddy, let's do it. Let's just pack up and leave. Yeah. Yeah. What about your mother? She seems to think I have a corrupting influence on you. You think for a moment she'd give up custody? yourself one of the nicest outfits you can find. I want you to really look good at that party. Daddy, this is $50. You don't even have a job. Mm -hmm. ah, come on, don't worry about that. I already got something better lined up. Let's take a look oh. in here. I don't believe me. <laughs> Third largest art supply house in the state. I'm going to be a district manager. How about this now? Hey, this is it, huh? Look at this. Well, I don't know. It's not so cute. Why don't we look around? Oh, come on. Now, what are fathers for? How often do I get to see you, anyhow? Yeah. A hundred dollars? Oh, Daddy, I love you. <laughs> I love you, too, baby. Who are you going out with tonight, Sarah? Just a guy. Not just a guy at all. He happens to be vice president of the junior class and captain of the swimming team. Ooh. How'd you know that? Oh, his mother may have mentioned it to me. Is that how you got fixed up with him, Sarah? Through his mother? No, he called and, and asked me... Wait, I didn't know you knew his mother. Oh, I've met her a couple of times. Well, you never told me that. Didn't I? Mom, you didn't happen to mention to her anything about Ken taking me out or anything like that, did you? Oh, no, why would I do a thing like that? I mean, I did mention that we have kids about the same age, and wouldn't it be nice if sometime they... Oh, I knew it! I knew he wouldn't be interested in me! Sarah, stop that! Well, how could you do a thing like that to me? I was only trying to help. We are new in the neighborhood, and you don't know many of the kids, and the situation just sort of came up. You mean you made it come up? Sarah, I have never tried to stop you from making your own friends. I did this for you. Can't you appreciate that? No, and I'm not going. Sarah? Look, I've had it. I'm just going to lock myself in a room, and when he comes, you can just tell him... Tell him what? Sarah, I have gone to a lot of trouble to arrange this. If you embarrass me, so help me, up. <laughs> now, look, you stay there, young lady. Sarah, listen now, honey. Mom went to a lot of trouble for this. Yes? Mrs. Hodges? Is uh, Sarah ready? You must be Ken. Yes, ma'am. Well, come on in. Sarah will be ready in a minute. We don't have a good time anyway, so why don't you just go, okay? Come on. Oh, hi. We better get going. Have a good
good time, you two. Good night, Mom. That's a nice truck you have, Ken. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Got a nice mom. I'm sorry for getting you dragged into this. Forget it. Listen, you can drop me in a movie if you'd like. Hey, it's okay. Come on, we'll have fun in here. Look, look closely. You're witnessing. How's the uh, Mercy Day going? Okay. You uh, want to dance with me? You know I do. Just, just wouldn't be fair to her. Oh yeah, right. Never interfere with a uh, social worker in the pursuance of his duty. Ken, we got things to do. Weren't you at the Glee Club tryouts the other day? Yeah. Shame you didn't make it. Are you looking for Ken? No, no, no. Excuse me. Hey, Sarah. Where are you going? I'm gonna go home. Go home? What? How do you get there? Take a bus or something. Hey, come on. We're gonna have a good time, okay? Come on. All right. Hey, Ken, how you doing? Hey, Ray. Kiss her one, two, will you? Hey, look at it. If my dad kisses on this. Hey, loud. Ray, she's my date, okay? Okay. Well, maybe I shouldn't. Well, come on, just one. It won't hurt you. That's all we're gonna have. Okay, just one. Sarah? No, she's right behind me when I left. To pass the time There's something wrong here There can be no denying One of us is changing Or maybe we just stop trying And it's too late, baby Now it's too late But we really did try to make it Something inside Really far up. Hey, that was great. 
get some more. Why don't you eat something? Sarah, you're not getting high, are you? I'm fine. Well, maybe I shouldn't have given you anything to drink. I'm fine. If you don't eat, how are you going to grow up to eat big and strong? Raquel Welch always ate all her potato salad. I mean, if you don't get all your vitamins, how are you going to ride your bicycle to school? My fault. Uh, some of the kids got to drinking a little, and I, well, I convinced Sarah to to go along with the crowd. Oh, we sure did. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, son, you run along. I think you've done enough damage for one night. Yes, sir. Oh, bye. <sighs> Mr. Hyman. Off to bed with you, Miss. We'll talk about this in the morning. It worries me that that girl's so easily led. So she had little to drink. At least she's not into drugs. Thank God for that. Good morning. Oh, did I miss breakfast? Oh, what time is it anyway? I didn't Ooh. think you'd be hungry this morning. Oh, Doc, there's no bacon left, huh? Oh, about last night. I guess you're not too pleased about it, huh? Should we be? Fifteen years old and you come home from a party roaring drunk. I wasn't drunk. I had a few drinks, that's all. Of all the places to pull a stunt like that, the Petersons, you have embarrassed us. You made a fool of yourself at Matt's boss's house. Joanne. We agreed I'd handle it. Look, Sarah. I know I'm not your father, and I've never tried to take his place, have I? But I think I have to take some responsibility for handling discipline around here. Now, it seems to me that any boy that gives liquor to a 15-year-old is not the kind of boy for you. What makes you think it was all his fault? Well, if it wasn't his fault, then whose fault was it? Did he give you the liquor, or didn't he? Don't you think your mother's entitled to an answer? All right, then. I think the punishment in this case, if it's to have... if it's to have any meaning at all, should give you time to think about what you've done. So I'm gonna keep you in the house for two weeks. No going out, no seeing your friends after school, no movies on the weekend. If that seems unfair to you, I, I'd like you to say so. Is the trial over? Yes. No excuse?
got me. Come on out. I can't I'm grounded for two weeks. You're kidding. That's kind of heavy, isn't it? I have to get to that party when home loaded. Well, my mom didn't think it was too cute. Well, I guess it wouldn't help if I talked to her, would it? Too much as they right now, she'd rather I went out with a Zodiac killer. Mm. Well, that's too bad. Well, I was hoping we could go meet Daisy. Daisy? My horse. Are you sure you can't get out on parole? Maybe if I called Matt. Matt? It's my stepfather. Oh. We've met. And apologize to Matt and Mom, and promise to never do it again. Wow, would that be so tough? Do you really want me to? Come on. Come on, Daisy. Come on. She's old. <laughs> About 11. That's why I got her so cheap. Of course, the best part of it is, she's got a lot of good stuff in her. And she loves me. <laughs> I guess you love her, too. Well, we're not engaged or anything. Oh, come on. Don't be embarrassed. I, I think it's great that you care about something that much. Go for a ride. Oh, wait a minute. I've never been on a horse before. I never even thought it was. Well, except for Pony Nose Little. Hey, come on, come on. Are you coming up or do I have to get a rope? What do I do? Put your foot in the stirrup. All right. Hand on the pummel. And I'll give you a good yank. Come on. There you go. You ready? I'll go slow. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. from what I expected. It's a lot different from the girls around here. I guess... Um, I guess I just like that. Touch the liquor, Mrs. Hodges. Mom, but see, it's all a mistake. It's no mistake. My husband says the liquor's been watered. Now, you can't fool a real scotch drinker about that. And there's been no one else around here to get into it. Well, then what would it matter if we gave her another chance? I'm sorry, Margaret. We won't be needing your services any longer. 
Now, I have to meet Matt for dinner. There's some chicken in the refrigerator for you, honey. We'll be back later. That? I'll just wait till your mother comes out if you don't mind. Oh. No, I don't mind. Of course, my mother's one of the longest shower takers in Western civilization. We're trying to get her in the Guinness Book of World Records. Well, that's one of the advantages of being the boss. I've got all the time in the world. Look, mister. I'll tell you the truth. My mother's not here. Yeah, I know. Well, see, it was my father's birth... Oh. Look, if you tell her, I'm gonna get in a lot of trouble. Look, if I left this stuff here, I could get in a lot of trouble. I could lose my license. I'm sorry. I guess I didn't think about that. Yeah. What time do you expect your mother back? Mister, please. Please, mister. All right. I'll let you get away with this, just this once. But if you ever try anything like this again, so help me, I'll... I won't, I promise. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you better turn off the shower. turned on to that stuff pretty fast. What time's party Saturday night? Are we gonna drive or take Daisy? Sarah, look, you got me a little worried. Don't you think the drinking is cool? I mean, right in the open. Isn't that a little dumb? Aren't you a little square? I mean, go out on the lunch court. Half the thermoses smell of booze. So it's not such a major crime. I don't care. I don't care about that. I only... I don't like seeing you do it, okay? Remember, you're the one... You're the one that got me started. Am I? Hey, I'm sorry. You don't want me to do it anymore, so I won't, okay? Hey, Sarah. You better get over to the counselor's office. The guidance counselor wants to see you. What for? I don't know, but you better hurry up and get over there. Your mom's waiting for you. My mother? Yeah, good luck. Will you call me? Sure. Bye. Okay. I think you know what the problem is, Sarah. You've been cutting classes. I told Mrs. Farrell there's been a mistake and that you'd clear it up. Um, well, last week I, I had to go to the library a few times to finish a report on overpopulation. And then, well, I got my period, so I went to lie down in a friend's car for a while. Why didn't you go to the nurse's office? I guess I should have. Mom, it's all a mistake, and it only happened a few times. Tell her you said it was okay. Mrs. Hodges, is this your signature on these absent excuses? Mom, don't you remember when you told me to write those out for you? Uh, 
Uh, Sarah, it's almost time for your class. Why don't you go now? Your mother and I will try to sort this out, okay? Go on, go on. You've made your point. Now it's up to me, isn't it? She refuses to strip the gym. She seems distracted. She has mediocre grades. She just does enough to get by. Now, Sarah is a girl with a high IQ and a lot of potential. Something's wrong. We have the new school situation. I saw her records from the last school. I'll have my husband talk to her as soon as he gets home tonight. I don't quite think that's the answer. She has trouble fitting in with the other kids. Her moods are erratic. She seems depressed sometimes. Well, she's a teenager. It's one of the prerogatives of that age. I used to get depressed if I got a pimple on my chin. Mrs. Hodges, last year we had a teenager who was depressed about a slight case of acne. He hanged himself. There must have been something else wrong with him. Not necessarily. I mean, some kids just handle things better than others. His parents just thought it was a passing phase. Mrs. Hodges, perhaps some professional counseling might help. I don't think so. Mrs. Hodges, the records show you were recently remarried two years ago. And That's I right. And do the records also show the kind of man I married? My husband is decent and hard-working. He cares for Sarah. He tries to be a positive influence on Mrs. her. Mrs. Hodges, Has anybody easy. bothered to put into the records that I have managed somehow to raise another daughter who is happily married and has a new baby and never tried to hang herself? I don't know what it is about you people. You've got to believe that every kid from a divorced home is a candidate for nine years on a psychiatrist's couch. That's it, isn't it? Well, maybe if the school did its job... Maybe if you made learning a little more interesting, got rid of some of the distractions, maybe if you did that instead of passing out the dime store psychology every time you have a simple discipline problem. I am not trying to be a dime store psychologist. Well, even if you don't, my husband knows how to handle that sort of thing. Oh, he loves it. <laughs> He should. His aunt made it for him in prison. My wife says he got off easy. They're letting him go to the beach party, aren't they? Hmm. Who are you going with? Oh, just some of the kids. And a special boy? Not really. Hey, come on. What are big sisters for? Well, well is he cute? Is he tall? He's just the most super guy in school, that's all. Can you believe somebody like that would be interested in me? Oh, why shouldn't he be? Got three days? I'll list all the reasons. I'm just surprised Mom hasn't mentioned it to me. Oh, well, um, Mom hasn't met him yet. Doesn't he come by the house to pick you up? Well, he, he doesn't live nearby. He goes to a different school. You said he goes to your school. Oh, did I? Sarah, you're not talking about that creep who got you drunk that night. Ken, what's his name? He's not a creep. Oh, Sarah. He's not like that at all. Honest. It wasn't his fault anyway. You're not going to tell Mom, are you? What are big sisters for, you said? Promise you won't tell? Promise? All right, Sarah, I promise. Oh, I think I'd better go. Sarah, but why can't you just tell Mom about it? Why can't you be straight with her? She'll understand. No, she won't. She never has. Seems all I ever do is manage to embarrass her. Sometimes I don't even think she likes me very much. I swear you sound more like Daddy every day. Yeah, well, now I'm beginning to understand what he had to live through. What about her? What about what she had to live through? Believe me, Sarah, you just weren't old enough to know what was going on between them. Yes, I was. 
She made him a, a salesman. He was a dreamer, and she tried to make him into a husband. Is that so wrong? Yes. Yes. I'm a little scared of life. I'm going to walk her across. Drinking. About that I got you started letting me take the blame that first night. Oh, that. Yeah, that. You don't drink like a beginner, sir. Well, I'm glad you know. It's been a real hassle on me. But if my mother ever found but out... I don't care about taking the blame. You don't? I care about you. I care that you seem to need that stuff. Oh, come on. You make me sound like some major alcoholic freak. Look, I don't see purple cockroaches climbing the walls. Look, I take a drink every once in a while because it makes me feel good. Makes all this hassle about my parents and the stuff in school go down just a little bit easier. Why do you have to drink when you're with me? I don't have to drink. I don't have to drink. I can quit any time I feel like it. I just don't feel like it. Go back to the fire. Let's not. Why not? Because... Stop if you want me to. service enough money you think they keep it clean oh they're all that way you know that hey honey as soon as i finish this your mother and i are going for a swim you want to join us oh no i can't i'm gonna go babysitting hey what are you gonna do with all that money you make i don't know listen there's a sale on tv sets at gordon's now i'd be willing to match what you've got would you like a new color set for your room really uh-huh super okay talk about it later Oh, that must be for me. Oh, Sarah, I almost forgot. 
Your father called and asked me to tell you that he's sorry, but he can't make it this weekend. Well, look, honey, I thought that you and Matt and I could do something together. Well, he's probably got a good reason. Wait, it's probably that new job. That new job he's been waiting for. He's gonna be a district manager. <laughs> Clifford, bye, Mom, bye, Matt. Hi, honey. I'm oh, sorry I'm late. Do you think I can have a friend over to study tonight? Yeah, I don't see why not. <laughs> Thanks. The other night, well, at the beach party, special to me. It was for me, too. No. I mean, like, well, like I've never... Well, well, you know what I mean. Well, me neither. <laughs> That's what I thought. Hey. Going together? We're just not. Then why don't we? Wasn't the guy we're supposed to ask the girl that? I haven't had a drink since the party. Good. Is that all you can say? Good? He said you weren't a booze freak. I believe you. Then why didn't you call me till last night? Sarah, look, come on. If I don't get at least a B in chemistry, I can kiss veterinary college goodbye. So let's just do our homework, okay? I love you. Do you love me? Do you? strong, isn't it? We've only known each other a few weeks. Not if you feel it. I, I like things the way they are. It's been good so far. Why do you want to push? you, Sarah. I maybe even like you more than any other girl, but that doesn't mean... What other girl? Well, you know. No, I don't know. Have you been seeing other girls? Well, some. Why? I haven't been seeing other guys. We never had that kind of understanding, Sarah. Who, Marilyn? Have you been seeing Marilyn? <sighs> hey, I don't need this. Oh, I should have known you were just using me. Oh, now look what you've done. Hey, look, I think I better go, okay? I think that's a great idea. Go back to your stupid Marilyn and tell her what a fool I've been. Oh, it's got 
not a bit there. Just put it right. No, just a little longer, please. No, he's got to be there. Just let it ring. Just let it ring. What got into you? How could you have been so irresponsible? You're just lucky Fred Tyler didn't call the police. Do you know that? This is going to be all over the neighborhood. It's going to be all over Mass Office. Just what was in your mind when you decided to pull such a stupid stunt? Answer me. Don't you have anything to say? No, I think I'm going to be sick. Good. I hope you get so hungover you'll be in bed for a week. Then maybe that'll give you something to think about next time. You sit there. Did he get drunk too? Hmm. You know who that Ken character. And don't bother telling me you haven't been seeing him because I know otherwise. Did Nancy tell you that? She promised. Never mind who told me. It was for your own good. I told you. Last week, what had to be done, Joanna? Now, do you agree with me? What? What has to be done? Who are you calling? His parents. Matt's going to tell them to keep that son of theirs away from my daughter. That he's got her drinking and God knows what else. Don't. Ken has nothing to do with my drinking. Sarah, don't try to protect him. It won't work. Do you remember after the Christmas party when I was real sick and the doctor said it was stomach flu? And when you fired Margaret for getting into the liquor? Who do you think really drank it? Mom, listen to me. I've been drinking for nearly two years now. Almost every day. I've snuck booze from the house. Stolen it from liquor stores. I've even taken money from your purse. Who knows? I probably would have drunk rubbing alcohol if I couldn't get my hands on anything else. You're lying. You don't have much faith in shrinks, do you, Mrs. Hodges? Well, I... Uh... <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's all right. Some days, I have doubts of my own. Now, uh, would you tell me again, please, why did you come? The guidance counselor at Sarah's school thought that there might be something wrong with Sarah. And... 
Well, I'm ready to admit that now. Some sort of behavior problem. Hmm. Sarah tells you she's been drinking almost every day for nearly two years, and you call it a behavior problem? Well, she wasn't picked up out of some skid row bar, you know. She's only 15. You want to tell me she's an alcoholic or something? That's not my judgment to make. Well, then who's going to decide? Sarah? That's right. Seems to me a 15-year-old who drinks every day has a lot to say that nobody is listening to. Believe me, doctor, I've listened. Have you heard? Kids develop alcohol problems like anybody else. Because they're troubled or lonely or frightened, booze helps them to live, to face social situations, to get through the day. And it works for a while. And then it stops working. Because alcohol is a mean and sneaky drug. First it giveth, then it taketh away. And one day, you know, it's going to kill you. What can we do? We can get Sarah's father down here. The four of us can go to work on this thing together. I wouldn't count on getting him here. I'll try. It's important. There's something important that Sarah has to do on her own. She'll do it. Now, Sarah, if we're going to accomplish anything, Sarah, you have got to get off the booze. It sets up a wall between us. She's not going to be doing any more drinking. I'll see to that. And not you, Mrs. Hodges, Sarah. What about you? Aren't you going to help? Of course I will. But the first step has got to be Sarah's alone. Now, I'm sure both of you have heard about Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh, no. I'm sorry. That's where I draw the line. Then you know about AA. Sure. Bunch of booze or somebody scraped up out of the gutter. She goes there, she'll learn more about drinking than she ever knew before. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that, Mrs. Hodges. We're a country of whiskey heads. Sarah gets permission to drink every time she sees you and your husband hoist that old five o'clock pick-me-up. You're not going to lay that on me, Dr. Kittredge. I'm not even sure I did the right thing in coming here. I mean, I bring you a child with emotional problems and you try to make her out to be some kind of wino. And before you'll admit that she might have a drinking problem, you'd sooner see her as crazy, right? Some kind of a head case? Mrs. Hodges, it's not anything to be ashamed of. Sarah, I think we better go. I think it's time Sarah started thinking for herself. Sarah. I'd like to talk to you alone for a few minutes. How do you feel about that? I'll stay. I'll wait outside. You're an alcoholic? No. No, I'm not. Hmm. All right. Do you believe me? <laughs> well, it, it doesn't matter what I believe. Something you have to know about yourself. Well, then I guess I won't be coming back here anymore. Suit yourself. If I was a... Well, I'm not. But if I was, how could I tell? Well, you cross a kind of imaginary line. You begin doing things that are destructive to yourself and the people around you. When you recognize that, then you know. Well, I don't do any of those things. And I can go drink you whenever I like. Do you ever get the shake, Sarah? cold sweats. Do you ever feel like you can't get out of bed and face the day without getting a little booze? You know, just an eye opener. Did you have a drink today before you came here? Sarah, would you like to show me that you can stop drinking for good? Never take another swallow? Do you ever... 
never get lonely. The creep gave me that piece of paper. It wants me to go to some cruddy old AA meeting. If you want to know the truth, Sarah, I don't think it's such a bad idea. No, Jim. I'm just surrounded by traitors. Sarah, if you're not an alcoholic, what are you afraid of going to the meeting for? Why should I? Just to please him? Hmm? How about to please me? Hid in the closet with it. But when I came to them and said, 
Mom, Dad, guess what? I'm an alcoholic. They didn't think that was so amusing. Or they'd rather that have been anything else. A cat burglar, a communist. It's hard for me to admit it to myself. But it wasn't their problem anymore. It was mine. And I had to kick and crawl and puke my way to the place where I could finally admit it. Lose enough friends and do badly enough in school and get so damn disgusted with myself and hate myself. I could finally look in the mirror and say, face it, man, you're an alcoholic. And if you don't get some help, you're gonna die. terrific job you've been doing there. Oh, I suppose you could have done better. Yeah, I think I could. I'm not forgetting how you turned Nancy against me. Nancy did not need any help from me. She was old enough to remember how it was when you were around. Yeah, and what about Sarah? I give my baby to you and what's his name, and you make her so damn unhappy she starts boozing before she's old enough to give up paper dolls. Oh, no, you don't, you're not going to blame me for that, Richard. I'm not the one who killed her head with all those beer bottle dreams about painting in the art What the hell would you know about dreams? The only dream you ever had was locking some poor slob into a nine-hour slot so you could sit around and, until noon in your house toast. How would you know how long I ever sat around? You were never there long enough to find out. Hey, Sarah, you got anything to say about all this? You've got a voice, you know. An equal voice. That's what family therapy is all about. Okay, let's try it this way. What would you say to your folks if you could get them to listen to you for once? Really listen. Mom, what I wish is... Mom, I wish it... You and Dad would, wouldn't fight so much. And that, that you still loved each other. Most that, that we were still all together. Honey, you know that's impossible. Well, then, I wish you'd love me for what I am. Not expect me to be Nancy or somebody I'm not. Dad? Daddy? Daddy, I love you. And I want to come live with you now. Oh, Sarah, you know your mother'd never go for that. Yes, I will. You will what? I'll let her go with you, Richard. Obviously, I haven't done a very good job with Sarah. I thought I did. I tried. Don't tell me. Don't tell her. Sarah, I do love you. The best way I know how. But... Maybe some kind of a change would be better for you. So, I give you my permission to go live with your father. Mr. Travis? Oh, sweetheart, uh, you know how much I want you to be with me. I mean, you know that. 
but uh, you know, I'm on the road almost all the time. I live out of a suitcase. You know, what kind of a life would that be for you? Hmm? And don't you really think it'd be better for, for a girl to live with her mother? I mean, that seems much more natural. And I can hardly take care of myself, much less a 15-year-old girl. You can certainly understand that, can't you? Hmm? Can't you? Well, what's everybody looking at? It wasn't my idea to come here, you know. You want somebody to, to hang the blame on. I can understand that. Well, it's not going to be me. You're not going to embarrass me in front of my little girl. No way. You're going to have to find somebody else to hang it on. Sarah T, portrait of a teenage alcoholic, will return. right with money and you think yeah. i'm going to sell it to you your age right listen i want to tell you i you want you out of here and i don't want you coming back or i'm going to yeah. call the police do you understand that out This six pack of bottle of tingles, some Cameron Castle, and three potato chips. Right. Okay, it'll be as simple as start the ID all. Get out of oh, here. Hey, do you think you could buy me a fifth of vodka? I've got the money here. Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I'll do anything you want. Please. How's that again, baby? I'll do anything that you want. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, hold it up. Uh. <laughs> Come on, I, I paid two. Can we have some? Right, you did. Here you go, Sarah. Oh. Oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.
a message at the airport. Now, where's she gone, huh? I don't know. How long? How long? Is All day. Matt's talking to the police again now. Joanne, we don't have anything to report yet. Come on in, Richard. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to tell Mom I'm going to see you before we leave. Hey, Mom! Oh! She starts acting like one. She ran away because you rejected her. I rejected her. You're the one who rejected her. You're the one who said you didn't care where she stayed or left. You have about as much sensitivity oh, as a what? Take it easy, Joe. Come on, Richard. We're all rational adults here. Sarah will be all right. Here, have some of this. It'll help. Thank God, Pat. Suffer, do you?
What for, Sarah? Come on, come on, you're not crazy. What am I, then? Everything I do is wrong. I'm just not, just not a normal person. I hurt the people I love. I destroy everything I touch. Cross that imaginary line, remember? You're just beginning to recognize it. I killed Ken Torres. That's right, you did. He may never forgive me for it. He may not. He picked up a guy for a bottle of booze. Well, that's something you're going to have to forgive yourself for. I feel so sick. Why? Why was I even put in the world? I have to feel so rotten all the time. Do something. Help me. I can't. What kind of doctor are you? Look, you have a choice, Sarah. You can sink into the bottom of a bottle and drown, or you can climb out. Now, I can't make that choice for you. I can't badger you or frighten you or coax you into it. No amount of therapy or love or gin and tonic is going to make you do it. You have to do it alone. But I can't do it alone. All you have to do is, you take the first step. After that, there'll be people to help you. I'll help you. Come on, come on. You won't. <sighs> you know the words, Sarah. I can't say them. I can't believe them for me. You're no doctor. You're just mean and you're ugly and you like to watch people suffer. Now just get out of here. All right. There are some people outside waiting for you. must have been awful for you, honey. But things are going to be different from now on. You'll see. And the first thing we have to do is just all forget this ever happened. Come on.
island girl wants to come up and live with me in San Francisco. When I get that job nailed down in a couple of weeks, we'll talk about it. Mom, Dad, it won't work the old way. Because well, it's what I am. I'm an alcoholic. I'm an alcoholic. You've only got to take the first step. After that, there'll be people to help you. 